You may have forked out to buy somebody one of these Canada Goose jackets for Christmas. They can go for over a grand. But it turns out you'd be putting a target on your back because thugs looking to make a quick buck have been caught trying to mug people for these coats. I'm now joined by former police superintendent from the Met, Leroy Logan, uh, and also former Metropolitan Police DCI, Mike Neville, good uh, uh, evening to both of you. Um, this is something that I came across kind of by accident, actually, uh, because one of my kids suddenly acquired one of these um, uh, goose jackets, and uh, I had no idea they were in such demand, and they're so kind of trendy that they get exchanged on eBay, on eBay all the time. But now suddenly people are looking at these designer uh, outfits, Leroy, and seeing an opportunity to either nick them and sell them, or nick them and look like the the, the cool guy downtown. Well, yeah, it's quite clear that people are so brazen now that they'll steal the jacket off your back. It's nothing that um, people um, sort of uh, have any uh, reservations about. And, and it's a phenomenon all over the world. I'm not giving any excuses for what's happening over here, but um, you're seeing this sort of uh, activity. And it's a lot of copycat stuff. You're mm. seeing, seeing it on social media and... Um, if it's um, carried out successfully in one part of the country, you see copycats elsewhere. And, uh, of course, we now see generally um, certain people pick on vulnerable people. So if they see you in a, a flashy jacket and you don't look that you can protect yourself and they'll take advantage of your situation, then they will um, pick on you. And they'll normally come mob-handed. So it's all very organised. And, and I wouldn't be surprised that these sort of um, activities feed into more organised cross-border activity, as we're seeing even with shoplifters. Shoplifters, you would think, would be individual. They're now organised and they're starting to have um, a national impact. And as I said, it's a phenomenon we're seeing in Western countries in Europe and America. Yeah, exactly right. And, Mike, is that right? I mean, is it the case now that these sort of gangs of kids are so brazen because they know that they're going to get away with it that they're just mugging each other, if you like, for whatever it is they've got? Well, there's no consequences anymore. You know, we've got a Conservative Party which has now said it won't have, uh, you know, sort of short sentences. So unless you're going to go to prison for 12 months, it, it isn't happening. Hmm. Uh, these youngsters know that they, they can get away with things. There's no uh, stop and search, uh, much from the police anymore. Uh, and it just gets worse and worse. So we see the yeah. organised shoplifting gangs, we see the organised mugging gangs, uh, and now we see uh, murders are occurring, the knife crime is up incredibly, uh, and it's just... It, it almost feels uh, lawless that uh, criminals can just get away with things and your average citizen just putting their head in their hands and saying, what's going to happen in this country? Yeah. Well, we saw that terrible incident over uh, New Year's Eve at Primrose Hill, Leroy, and, you know, what is going to be the, the future for kids in this country? Because I tell my kids now, if you're going to come up to London, don't get your phone out, you know, don't walk around looking as if you're not aware of what your surroundings are, you know, and now I'm going to have to probably tell them, uh, be careful what clothes you wear. It is a, a, a terrible trend of um, not only... The killings and, you know, our heart goes out to Harry Pittman's family um, suffering this tragedy in the last day of the year and obviously still suffering it in the first few days of this year. Uh, and, and it's unfortunately something that's spilled over from crime hotspots and it can happen anywhere. You're, you're finding that, um, again, um, young people, some, certain young people have been hijacked by this disrespect culture and invariably they're already tooled up and for the slightest of reasons or sometimes even no reason they'll use a weapon um, because they might have been insulted or they, and it results to violence so we, we've got a critical mass of young people who are bought into this narrative carrying knives because you know once you carry a knives you're not only more likely to use it but also be a, a victim of it and with, that's why these trends are increasing. But we really need to start getting to early intervention prevention. You know, when you had citizens focused cops, like when I was in Hackney, our Safe and Neighbour teams, they focused on the young people to pick up the, the ones that are really showing the wrong signs. They really start to get into trouble. Maybe it's problem families, maybe it's dysfunctional neighbourhoods, you know, negative role models, all these sort of things. 
but they were able to get those early interventions, signpost them into youth activities, um, educational program, work with the schools very closely and the family. Now, we don't have those assets, and these young, uh, youngsters who are vulnerable to the thug life narrative are getting groomed and, and walking around mob-handed again and thinking they're untouchable. And as we already said, the courts are not reflecting those sort of sentences because you'll hear about youngsters going before the courts, giving a slap on the wrist, and next minute, they're murder suspects. Yeah, but that's the problem, isn't it, Mike? I mean, you've got Sadiq Khan going on about how great New Year's Eve was. He's barely said a word about the stabbing incident that happened, the murder that happened on Primrose Hill, a very nice part of London. Uh, we've got people uh, sending us messages saying, Paul says, absolutely uh, dangerous. Khan sits on his high horse and goes on uh, X saying how great New Year's Eve celebrations are, with no mention in how to fight the pandemic that is knife crime in London. And it feels to me as though certainly central London, the west end of London, um, is now a kind of no-go area for families isn't it? It's shocking. And the elephant in the room, of course, is stop and search. All the time, the Metropolitan Police has been criticised racism. You get the Baroness Casey report, which quotes yeah. about the number of stop and search, black youth. It never mentions about the crime rates, the murder rates. 2% of London's population are young black men. Yeah. They commit something like 60% of knife murders. It can't carry on like this. Stopping and searching results in less murders and less deaths, particularly less deaths of young black men. And, and, and I'm afraid to say that Leroy and other people have campaigned for more, less stop and searching, and the consequences are on us now. That's the elephant in the room. I mean, that's no, true, no, Leroy, I, isn't it? No, no, no. I mean, I have never advocated less stop and search. All I said is it's got to be intelligence-based stop and search, not fishing expeditions where there's proper reasonable grounds and leading to a higher hit rate to get the people that are um, committing these crimes and the ones that are grooming them into um, um, thug life, county lines, the whole nine yards. I have never... I know stop and search is a useful tool, but it's still a tool that needs to be sharpened up with community intelligence. The more closer you are to the young people who are in amongst this um, feuding situation or the ones on the margins, you can actually get more information. So you're a more, lot more proactive and you're targeting the people that are not only carrying the knives, but who's carrying it for them or where they dump them. I mean, I've, I've, I've been in Hackney um, for 40 odd years. I'm still in Hackney, even in retirement. I run a, uh, a a charity that I helped set up in 2001. And we speak to young people on a regular basis. We have a leadership programme around reducing crime and violence. And those young people have told us over 20 years where these things are happening and how we can support them. And, of course, it has to be a joined-up approach. It's to recognise that a lot of these young people are traumatised and, and so they go off on a tangent because they really don't know how to assess things properly. And as I said, they can resort to violence in a heartbeat. So it's a question of not just stop and search, intelligence based at that, but recognizing the trauma of these young people working with early intervention and prevention programs and understand the co-factors like the, the, the music and the videos and, and the films that glorify thug life and really educate our young people to know that's a, that's a cul-de-sac towards prison. These are the sort of things you've got to do because education is the key as well as Yeah, but if it's getting worse, Leroy, presumably, but, you know, if it's getting yeah, worse, absolutely. then what you're doing isn't working. No, 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 I, it's I, because I, can of I just austerity... Say Leroy, austerity... Said, like, Leroy, you spoke for a let long me, time. Let me land on this. Yeah, yeah, let, let, Mike, let Mike speak, mm -hmm. haven't it? Go on, Mike. You speak for a long time, Leroy, and I've also been involved in youth work in the inner cities... And for the last 30 years of my life, I've been involved in youth work in the inner cities. And you say a lot of fine words, and the, but the, the listeners and the viewers will see this, that all that those things, they're not working. There is more and more death, more and more young people are dying, particularly young black men. And it's a question of this. Hands in pockets do not hurt. Knives in bellies do hurt a lot, and they kill people. And the whole campaign, criticising the police, the constant rhetoric that the police are racist because they arrest more black people than white people, has brought about the wickedness that we see today. No, that's and you can totally say all the fine words that you do, and it's, that is the no, facts of the No, no, no. You're, you're, you're buying into a fake narrative. And it's quite clear you're into whistleblowing politics like the right-wing politicians, and as a result of that, you are fear-mongering. This 
This situation's but been there's a building lot of fear out there, for decades. And, and let me land. Let me land. It's quite clear that the young people that we're talking about are, you know, it didn't happen overnight. You know, these things that should be picked up from school. You know, teachers uh, as well as parents should be recognising that their youngster is carrying a knife and everything. So it's not just about enforcement. And please, Casey Review was not just um, picking um, institutional racism, sexism, misogyny out the air. She gave clear evidence. So it's not a question of you just dis disregarding this. This sense of denial is not going to help policing. It's not going to help uh, having it's safe not and secure denial, or, um, right. communities. It's not me in denial. It is not so the me bottom line, denial, guys, here. the bottom line for, for both of you, and I take both of your points on board, but in the end, Leroy, London is a more violent city than it was five years ago, than it was ten years ago. Uh, more people are getting stabbed, more kids are being killed. And I saw the statistics, as you did, I'm sure, the other day, of the 21 people who died, teenagers, in London, by far and away, apart from about two of them, they were black. So it's not like Mike Neville's being a racist. It's not like no, no, right -wing I'm, not, I'm not suggesting he's a racist. Please, uh, it's don't not, put it's words like, on my mouth. But hang on, I am but not it's, in but it's, any not, way. Hang on, it's, yeah, I've let you both speak. I'm going to speak now. It's my show. For for for, for the best part of, of the last year, a lot of the murders have been committed either by young black men on young black men, and you might as well admit that. And that's a problem, isn't it? I'm not denying that. But there's a lot of other factors that leads to this form of self-loathing where they don't care if they live or die and, and, and they don't care if other people live and die. And that's why they use these knives. You know, I'm, I'm not giving excuses for um, bad policing. I'm, I'm actually hailing good policing. And one of the main things that's happened over the last 14 years is t um, reducing community cops that used to be a good bridge between the police and the community, including young people, and how that ties in with youth services being trashed as well. Because I know from when I used to be heading up Safer Neighbourhood Teams, the second one in all of the country, in the borough of Hackney, I had youth workers, detached workers. They were problem solvers. They were um, reducing feuds. They were giving information about where the next feud's going to be, how it's going to act, where's the knives, where's the drugs, all these sort of things. It was a more proactive thing. All we've got at the moment is firefighting policing. And they're doing yeah. an amazing job, but it's a very challenging one. But some, we have got road cops who don't do what they should do. Yeah. So yeah, let's right. be okay. totally Listen, up front we're gonna, and we're gonna know have to, we're that have to carry the this austerity on. measure is a, been a massive problem yeah. over the last 15 years. Yeah, it has, absolutely. But it's not the austerity that's causing the people being stabbed.